The crime happened with five other teenagers. Christopher was the oldest. What was told to me by not just my son, but the others, it was never intended to be a, a homicide. Um, they were going to joyride in the car, leave the car with them in the trunk, somewhere, make a call, and have someone come and get them. And I think things just got out of hand. I think Christopher snapped for whatever reason. And um, it, they were trying to cover up the evidence. When he explained it to me, it seemed to me that he had a psychotic break. Um, like he wanted to take it back as soon as it had happened, um, but obviously he couldn't. But he was guilty, he was the shooter. It's easier for them to make a monster out of my child in this case. Um, Is he a monster? No, he's not. You know, like how long do we have before he's executed? This was in the very beginning. And they told me five years. Well, he was on death row 20. And I went from being a newlywed to the mother of a murderer in a matter of months. Being the assistant security manager and I answered to a two-star general, I had to go to that general and say my son was just arrested in a double homicide. It cost me my career. It eventually cost me my marriage. It cost me my relationship with my only other child for many years. Um, I actually became a Messianic Jew when he went to prison. He converted five years after going to prison. He, he was completely transformed. He literally fought the prison chaplain for two years to hold services. Well, the area that they had, he called them cages, that each man was in a separate cage. They could see each other, they could speak to each other and share. He had seven that he literally ministered to for 15 years out of the 20 years of his incarceration. He was 42 days past his 19th birthday when he was arrested. So they arrested a child and they murdered a man. I just wanted him to go peacefully. The Death chambers in the center. You have the victim family members to the inmates right. The reporters are at their feet and then the family members for the inmate are on the left. I can remember when the curtain was lifted on my room, the first thing I noticed was the back of Christopher's hand was completely bruised. I could see an IV coming out of the wall where whoever it was was going to administer the drug is hiding. When they pushed the drug, the first thing I noticed on Christopher was that he puffed out his cheeks. He kind of went puff, puff, like that twice it's because the drug is breaking their bronchi in their lungs and their lungs are filling up with fluid. It's like being waterboarded. It was like watching my son be strangled in front of my eyes and I couldn't do anything about it, literally. The first two years after he was sentenced, I dreamt of his execution every night. In the dream, he's reaching out to me. And his eyes, his eyes were saying, save me, mama. And when I actually was there witnessing it, he was crying when he died. But he was looking right at me. Uh, my sister, she just was holding my hand and she said, he's gone, Lisa, he's gone. This is the letter that I received after Christopher's execution. It's down here, if you look closely, it says manner of death homicide. This is Christopher right here. 
Um, it's a double grave. I'll be buried with him when I go. And I usually come on his birthday and on Mother's Day. And, you know, just when I'm missing him. <laughs>